Well, I've been thinking a lot lately about how I'm gonna die, you know, as any unhealthy 28-year-old does. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to hell before I shoot some Lomo 800. So that's what this video is about. Lomo 800. It's long been recommended, and it's finally here. I say that because that shit is really popular, apparently, and is constantly sold out. Lomography is a company that specializes in, let's say, creative looking film emulsions. They are the company behind popular film stocks like Lomo Purple, Teal, Metropolis, and other film stocks that some may consider to be experimental. However, Lomography also offers a color negative line of film that we're going to be looking at today. Lomo Color 800 is a C41 color negative film that is the highest ISO that Lomography currently offers. I should preface all this by saying, in order to review this film objectively, I bought this Lomo 800 with my own money transferred from a Swiss bank account under a fake name. I did all that work so that I could review this film 100% free of outsider influence or bias. You're welcome. Now, if you have no life and you spend as much time online as I do, you may know that Lomography isn't the actual producer of this film. Supposedly, if you believe internet conjecture, Lomography has confirmed that Lomo 800 is cut from a Kodak master roll. But a master roll of what stock? Well, it's never been pinned down for sure, but it seems more than likely that it's a Kodak Gold slash Max 800 that Kodak actually still produces, though mostly in use for disposable cameras. Additionally, some people online speculate that it could be an old formula for Kodak VR1000 as well. But just like how we'll never know if Bigfoot is a real-life giant ape, or just me wandering shirtless through the forest, the mystery will continue to live on. So anyway, my brother Matt had heard of this campsite in a distant far off land that had these awesome hot springs. So we hopped in Matt's Prius and hit the road to verify how cool this campsite could be, you know, for science. I brought none other than my shitty attitude, some Lomo 800 and my Pentax 6x7, both as a tool for fighting off coyotes and shooting 6x7 negatives on medium format. Our first stop would be a spot in the desert that is one of my favorite places to camp at. After easily setting up the tent in the wind, no problem at all, definitely not a hassle. We decided to do what every well-adjusted adult does, drink on an empty stomach. Hey, I mean it saves you money, but only to cost you later. And boy did we pay the toll. We woke up, felt like shit, packed up our shit, and hit the road. As we cruised towards our destiny, I recalled hoping that my long exposure that I took the night before would turn out. And luckily it did. Using a tripod and a cable shutter release, I set the aperture to the lowest possible setting and then opened the shutter for over three hours. Which is about two and a half hours longer than it took for us to realize that well-adjusted functional adults don't chug whiskey straight from the bottle. Most of the shots I took in the desert were exposed at box speed, with the exception of one or two shots that were exposed one stop over at 400 ISO, just to see how the film handles an abundance of light. And I'm happy to report, it does quite well. I'd say this emulsion, whatever it truly is, definitely provides the film look, whatever that means. Most shots definitely had a healthy amount of warmth in the shadows and yellow in the highlights. Anyway, back to the main plot line. Getting to this campsite would be no easy task. The road was 10 miles of rocky and narrow backcountry that took us along the edge of a cliff at some points. And the final boss would be a river crossing. But hey, 
If it were paved, not only would there be a ton of people and inevitably a crossover KFC Taco Bell, but the reward wouldn't have been as satisfying. Needless to say, after a somewhat risky river crossing, we made it and set up camp. The whole area definitely had some sort of geothermal activity going on to make these pools heated, which could only really mean one thing, that there was a volcano somewhere nearby. And if you know anything about me, it's that a volcano will definitely kill me one day. The Lomo 800 definitely had a chance to shine here as there was an abundance of green, which I think that the emulsion renders quite beautifully. Hell, I'm halfway convinced that Lomo 800 would make a great stock to shoot wedding photography with, but what do I know? I'll never get to be a bride. All of these photos were scanned on a flatbed scanner and converted with Native Lab Pro, in case you were wondering. So, the natural hot springs turned out to be everything we dreamed, and more. Location, 10 out of 10. Water temperature, 10 out of 10. Water flavor, 6 out of 10. All right, so brief non-film related story time. So we had set up camp and this guy came over and started hanging out with us. <laughs> Jason. What's up, man? What kind of beer you got? He was there just for the day because you can access the campsite by ATV. Anyway, this gangsta claimed that he has done every drug in the book. And while I was certainly impressed that he was still alive, red flags were definitely starting to go off in my head. Apparently, he had found a bottle of Peach Crown Royal in his brother's cabinet and chugged it that morning. He also told us he wants to be a comedian, so who knows if any of this is true. I guess I'm just trying to paint a picture of this character. We don't even have a f***ing McDonald's. No. <laughs> like, that's a piss poor ski town if you ask me. Yeah, all they have is like Jack in the Box. As it soon became time to go, he took one more swig of whiskey, hopped on his ATV, and I shit you not, he sent it up this 65 degree dirt incline going as fast as he could, never to be seen again. By us, at least. And that's where the story ends, or so I thought. Before he left, amongst his various life stories, he told us that he knew exactly where Forrest Fenn's hidden treasure was and that him and his brother were gonna go find it the following week. I the treasure? The fo no, forest, uh, what's his name? You know where it's at. Yeah. For what's his name? Forest? Forest Fan. You heard about that, Jason? Yeah. yeah. If you don't know, Forest Fan is an art collector that hit a treasure box of gold somewhere in the Rocky Mountains about 10 years ago. Anyway, cut to present day, and it was announced on June 7th, 2020, by Forest Fan himself that the treasure has been found. June 7th was about two weeks after we did this trip, which means it was about two weeks after Peach Crown Royal ATV guy told us he was gonna go get it. What kind of beer you got? Now, obviously, I don't know for sure, but I'm starting to wonder if this was the guy that found it, because frankly, the timing is impeccable. As of right now, Forrest Fenn hasn't released the name of who found it, and I'm not sure that it'll ever get released. But at the very least, I hope that if it was Drunk ATV Guy, that his newfound fortune launches his new career in comedy. Anyway, the next morning I woke up at sunrise to empty my clip of 800 and reflect upon my long exposure that I did the night before. Eh, it turned out okay. Later that same morning, I had the hot spring all to myself. It was so quiet and peaceful. I can't remember the last time I was alone like that. Oh wait, yes I can, it was my senior prom. As I sat there in the hot spring, I thought about none other than Life, Liberty, and Lomo 800. Is Lomo 800 a cheaper alternative to Portra 800? Well, I don't think it's really as solid as Portra 800, but that might just be because I'm a huge whore for Kodak's Portra line. However, 
it is also not cheaper. For medium format on B&H, Portra 800 goes for around $10.59 per roll in a five pack versus Lomo 800's 1160 per roll in their three pack. To be fair though, if you buy both films in 35 millimeter, the Lomo 800 is like 60 cents cheaper per roll. On top of that, Lomography currently only offers the emulsion in three packs for both 120 and 35. And as I mentioned before, it is quite often out of stock. Another thing to consider too is if you're scanning in Silverfast, there are currently no profiles for any Lomography films, if that's something that's important to you. Since the rumor is that this is a Kodak stock, you can probably just use the Kodak Gold slash Max preset. Or hell, use any preset you want. I won't tell anyone, unless I get subpoenaed for some reason. Then you're f***ed. So in the end, even if Lomo 800 is constructed upon a consumer grade Kodak film, I still think it performs very well in most situations, unlike how I perform under pressure, like the pressure to think of a joke to conclude this video.